Yeah. Yeah, it's that time. It's been 5,000 years. And the thing is, I'm not even mad, you know? I, I, I'm real enough to be like, yo, do your thing, and I'll be here when you get back. I can't lie to you. While you was away, I, it was definitely some people out here saying that you wasn't really, you know what I'm saying, that, that great of a vocalist anyway. I would never say something like that because, you know, as a, as, a, as a fan since day one, I certainly wasn't one of the individuals saying, like, Summer Walker better, Janae Aiko would never do this to Nick. I would never say nothing like that. But see, now that you're back, you can dispel rumors about, you know what I'm saying, your lack of skill or talent i sat here waiting for years with patience loyalty all that all that good jazz it's about to be a beautiful day for annoying bitches SZA is back on the map who is literally the drake for women on a real note i'm happy that this is back i'm happy that the album is here not so happy about 23 tracks um i did miss you but not that much i'm very excited i want to know what the wait has been uh if it was worth it or not you know first track is sos kind of crazy how she want niggas to help her but like where were you in 2018, 2019, and 2020 when I needed you to drop some music? I don't remember seeing you. That's kind of crazy. Give me a second. Give me a minute. Nah, little bitch, don't let you finish. Alright. I said I gave them free, but I wanted back, wanted back. Did a lot. No more fuck shit. I'm done. Damn right, I'm the one. I just mine. Good first track, you know? I got the very strong vibe that I'm here bitch and don't get it fucked up just because i ain't been here in a minute don't mean i won't be here for a minute you know what i'm saying that was cool track number two is kill bill gotta stop giving rapper hands to an r&b album but i mean she really just she's speaking to me right now you know what i really like about this track is how warm and like tropical it feels it feels island like or like you at the beach in miami bright colors from a sunset yeah i like that i, I, I can picture it. hold on i just peeped with like, what you just said you was mature oh i get it you crazy it's a double entendre i would say that i understand the sentiments of this song even though I don't. I still like the track and how, you know what I'm saying? She's kind of rationalizing these demented thoughts by convincing herself that she's better than the act that she wants to commit. I like that. Even though, like, no. Track number three is Seek and Destroy. I didn't know she was a Call of Duty player. It might be a little disrespectful to say this, but I'm feeling some brandy vibes. Some 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 full moon-esque harmonies is what I'm feeling. I, I can't lie. With the level of songwriting, kinda. Not really, but kinda. I like that track. I think it could have been way shorter. It was going nowhere fast after a while. The whole do it to you uh, hook got old real, real quick. Not a bad track vocally. I just think the track goes in circles forever. Uh, track number four is low. <laughs> Oh my god, is that Travis? I don't know. I like the cut. I do. Sonically, I think it's cool. Travis Scott ad libs coming in got me thirsting and wondering, yo, where is Travis Scott on this track? I know the ad libs are a nice little effect, but it feels like a Travis Scott song where Travis Scott forgot to feature on it, made for him, and then for some reason he called last minute and said he couldn't make the session. I don't mind SZA on this track. It just don't really feel her speed. Uh, track number five is Love Language. Hurt me, I can't compete. Still on the way, I may away give you not I will show you everything. Oh, that's her. I thought that was a random nigga. Like, what are you? Who is this? That's what I really like from SZA. This elegance. That was an elegant cut that is a bit more modern in its description of her relationship. A violin will do that for you, but I think her voice just suits this song way more. This is almost implying that, yo, she's addicted. Track number six. Niggas want me. This is the end of that one song. Is it t-shirt? It's the end of t-shirt. I don't know if the end of t-shirt on Apple Music or on streaming, there is an ending to. 
I don't know if it's just the music video, but I've been wanting to hear this song actually. This was like a lot of great vocal melodies. Whatever you lost, I will give it back to you tenfold. It seemed like a singer's fun. Just very vocally expressive on that track, and I liked it. You know what I'm saying? She flexed a little bit, and I like that. On this cut, she's also kind of saying, like, there are things that I want and things that I need that I can't really control or I can't explain why I want or need. I just need them. I know that they are part of me. Number seven is used featuring Don Tolliver. <laughs> Hey, yo, these niggas are trying to get niggas in trouble. Look, man. The drums are coming in heavy for this track. It is. Like, basically, the drums are all I need right now. Of course, having a singer like SZA and then having someone like Don Tolliver come in and give his performance and his con contribution as well, I think that's cool. But it's the groove of this cut that really gets me to vibe out. It's really rhythmic. And their voices just put me on cloud nine. <laughs> Content wise, the album isn't varied that much so far, but thematically, you know what I'm saying? We kind of on the same path. So if it wants to maintain this vibe, that's cool. I am interested to see what the other tracks delve into if we're gonna keep with this in and out style of relationship that she's describing, where I don't necessarily like the person that I'm with, but there are parts of me that need this attention from this individual. And it's almost like she's saying like these parts of me don't exist 100% of the time. It's like 10% of this part of me wants you here. 10% of this part of me wants me here. But it's enough for me to not be able to ignore what these parts of me need. Even if I feel like a totally different being up here, if it makes any sense. The next track is Snooze. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, another cut where it's like, you know, I do anything, which ain't really a problem. Um, this is just scissors kind of like down bad moment. You know what I mean? Relatable sentiment, but I'm wondering where we, where we head next, you know? All right, track number nine is notice me. Please notice this girl, man. Cause you, uh, it's a lot going on, bro. She going through it. She got me. 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 I said I wasn't gonna sing along. 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 I said I wasn't gonna sing. Am I an IG model now? Damn. I really just said I want to be your person. I ain't never said no shit like that before. I'm be honest with you. That's corny. That's some fuck girl shit. To be honest. But she sang that really, really well. Huh. I guess that means it's a good song. Maybe. I think the melodies are the biggest highlight for me on this album. Scissor's voice, the tunes that she's in, you know what I'm saying? The way she's singing. I think those are definitely the highest moments on the record so far. Because uh, content-wise, we're not varied right now. Which is fine, you know, thematically, it's all wrapped up into the same thing so far. But I am trying to see something else i want to i want to hear another perspective here i am concerned about scissors songwriting but you know what i'm saying we got 10 more tracks to go uh gone girl at number 10. You and I do it i like how grand that track was i ended like very climactically every hook every chorus it just got larger and larger um a bit more uh, vocal layering and, and 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 felt like a higher high every time i felt like an ascension every time so 
I like that cut. It's like a funeral and a celebration at the same time. Um, when she's talking about Gone Girl, I don't know who she's talking about. It could be the other self within her, the other parts of her saying that this part of you is dead now. Um, I don't know. I like that track a lot. The way it comes in, like the, the hook, in, in the singing like as far as it matches the instrumental there's a part where the hook doesn't seem to match the instrumental instrumental and it starts too late but it still works it's a it's a weird start for that hook but i like it track number 11 is smoking on my x-pack all right you gotta get over it all right this nigga wasn't that great you test it i might go you push it i might pop i'm fucking on hot throbs i got your favorite we may get back together i'm screaming back at a bus trick hawaii for weather smoking on my ex back tonight smoking on my ex back tonight okay i like that you know what i'm saying I could tell a little Kendrick, you know, insp inspiration there with the smoking on your top five tonight, tonight. I like that though. She's she's doing well. She's doing well. Well, Ghost in the Machine. This, this is the one I actually been waiting on. Phoebe Bridgers. Um, a lot of people made a lot of noise about Phoebe Bridgers. I think it was in 2021 or it might have been 2020. I think she was on the Kid Cudi record. As far as collabs, I don't think she's done many. So I'm interested to see what she's going to do on this on this cut. Can you make me Phoebe. Beautiful performance, especially from Phoebe. Phoebes. Phoebes. She sounds like a mermaid at the bottom of the ocean who's just encountered a submarine that's making her vibrate. I don't know how else to describe this track. This is the angel and Phoebe's the mermaid. They both they both sound mythical on this track, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Phoebe Bridges definitely would have fit on that Lyra Premick album the way she's singing on this feature though. Now I need a collab. Oh, Ghost, they they that's that's what they sound like, Go. Uh, F2F. Uh, too Fast, Too Furious? Uh, all right. <laughs> Nah. Nah. Feel what I'm saying? Just, just nah. Let's not. Let's not do that. Let's not. Um, let's not. Let's not. You know what I'm saying? It's just that. It's, it's not not your lane. You know what I'm saying? It's like that was trash. I can't lie. That was trash. Like, bro, if you don't say this iCarly ass intro for a Nickelodeon show, I ain't gonna lie to you, though, but I appreciate the effort. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate the effort. Like, I'm not even saying it's like trash. I literally just said it was trash, though. Um, no, I, I, I would say like the attempt is, is nice. It's just not a creative attempt. That's all. Rock in this vein is is nice. It's nice to hear, but it's so derivative. Uh, and doesn't just it doesn't bring nothing new. And I don't feel like she like utilized her vocals in a really creative way. Um, I'm sure it'll be like widely accepted because it's SZA doing it. But as its own cut, I just don't think coming from an average like the regular person, this isn't like a standout cut to me. Uh, track number 14 is Nobody Gets Me. All right. We getting edgy with it. Yeah. strike she did it that's a good that's a good you know what i'm saying like sensual low-key you know what i'm saying if you wanted to try to attempt a folk cut here you could not saying that's what it is yet but you could Oh. It's a Jonas Brothers ass song, but you know what? She did her thing. I like women simps. I do. I think it's a good little vein for them to explore. A lot of the time, musically, they're not putting themselves in position to be the the chase -y, you know? So hearing how they, you know, deal with heartache in the in the way where they feel like personal responsibility for like the relationship ending is always interesting to hear. But I do think it's sad that the only time that this person, well, I say this person as SZA, feels like self-worth is when she's with this person that she wants or wants back, whatever you want to call it. She's throwing out a lot of casual like 
stuff that I think is incredibly like uh, alarming that if you dig deep enough into you're like, oh shit, this person, they might have a lot more to unpack than they're letting on. I just wish songwriting wise, we got more of what that unpacking, you know, is without context to the the man that she's, you know what I'm saying, trying to be with right now. 15 is conceited. <laughs> I fuck with that. I fuck with that. I fuck with that right there. It's okay. It's okay. How to pick it a litter. Do what you want to do. Fuck who you want to fuck. You ain't got to be tied down. Have those moments. I like that, man. I like that. Sometimes you're going to feel like that nigga. Sometimes you just him or her. You know what I mean? It is what it is. I like that track. Real confident, you know? it's a fleeting moment that she's probably feeling but um a moment worthy of capture nonetheless i like that all right track number 16 is special i wish i was special i gave all my special no, i'm just a loser ah that's fucked up man see this is the type of songwriting i like though because on the previous cut we just talked about how conceited she was and how confident she felt these moments are very few and far between far and few whatever the fucking saying is you feel like this high and it lasts for like maybe 20 minutes out of like a month and it's like a roller coaster that shit go way way down some people have many different ways that they end up losing said confidence some it's you know what i'm saying workplace issue you didn't get acknowledged you some 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 is school they put that value in school you didn't get the grades on your paper that you wanted to get others they put themselves in the position of being valued through love so when they give it to somebody and they don't receive it back they don't feel worth anything everybody goes to their own version of those types of things you know what i'm saying so i like this here because clearly her vice is relationships or or love as she's describing it on this album and now she feels worthless now she feel like a loser show me some no, it's 18 seconds left. She can't show me shit. All right, he said, well, I like it. Track number seven is... Seven, two, all right, track number 17 is too late. Not too crazy. Nothing in comparison to the previous track, in my personal opinion. But she's still on her simp shit, which is cool. Uh, track number 18 is far. feel like she need to get away get far away from these people this person whoever um to get back to herself you know what i'm saying i gotta go far from you to find me that's kind of bars that's kind of bars uh track number 20 is open arms with travis scott open, 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 open i ain't gonna lie the way that started off i was thinking it was gonna give me some in, uh, some irreplaceable interpolation but she she cleaned it up she did something different i thought i thought i was on to something but i wasn't i'm a loser Bro, I'm not about to do this shit no more, bro. I'm not. I'm not. I gotta, I gotta speak my mind. This nigga trash. Garbage. I'm sorry. And I like Travis Scott. No, I don't. I'm gonna stop pretending. But like on, on real shit, like this is a song that he didn't need to be on, bro. I don't know why niggas are like, why do y'all do this? Why do y'all force rappers to be on songs they don't need to be on? Get somebody else. Go get FTA. Why? Why are you acting like FKA Twigs ain't dropping amazing record record this year? She can. She can. She can. She can add a lot to this song, bro. Like, come on, bro. Like, go tap her. Go tap her. Go. Go. Go, go tap in. I fuck with Travis, bro. Heavy. Not really. I actually hate him. Hate his guts. I don't hate him at all, though. On a lot of these cuts, it's like, let's throw Travis on. Like, you don't have to. I get it. He worked for Love Galore. I get it. Barely. But it ain't gonna work every. Um, good scissor track, bad Travis Scott feature in my personal opinion. Feel free to disagree. I've already heard I Hate You and Good Days. Good Days being one of my favorite uh, scissor singles, just period. 
And uh, last track is Forgiveness with ODB. Okay. Okay. Hey, yo, she kind of killing it. I can't lie to you. She kind of killing it. She said 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 it. Forgiveless. I don't know what that means in context of the full record. I can't lie. But how do I feel about Scissors' return to society? You know what I'm saying? I like it. Now, content wise, songwriting wise, these are always these are, these have always been my biggest issues with SZA. And songwriting wise, I don't feel like the allegations that I have against SZA in terms of her not being the greatest or craziest songwriter have have withered away with this record. Unfortunately, I know L me. But where I feel like her strengths shine, I don't know why I said strength like that. Where I feel like her strengths shine are her vocals, her voice. It's, it's the biggest highlight of this record by far, which is the biggest compliment that you can give to a singer, but it's also the best thing about one of their records. You know, it's their, it's their standout. It should be the main attraction. And for her, I think it's honed to almost its highest degree. I don't think it's used in very cheap ways outside of the cut that seems like it's supposed to be a Travis Scott feature on it, but there isn't, which is really annoying because Travis Scott would have fit way better on that track. His ad-libs are all over the fucking track. But he's featured on a cut where he sounds completely fucking awkward and devoid of any personality or soul at all. The tracks where she's doing her thing, I think she's shitting, okay? I think she's going crazy. There are a couple of rap cuts here where I don't feel like it's the best rap uh, like ever. But flow-wise, it just seems like she'd be extremely comfortable if she decided to take something like that seriously. Casually throwing melodies and singing into the mix. I think helps those rap cuts and make them far more interesting as opposed to if she were just trying so hard. I do or would like to see what would have happened if she would have had more R&B centric features on this cut. I would have liked to hear something with her and Ari Lennox possibly. I think her and Phoebe Bridgers did great. I think that was a great cut as well. Concept or idea of love being Scissor's like biggest vice and her kind of feeling like her value was wrapped up in it. There are also parts of herself that need this attention that kind of crave this uh validation from this person whoever it is that she's talking about and her feeding into those desires i think is really realistic and it's mature of her to expose and kind of highlight on the record it's something that she kind of gave up on with the uh, overall idea of control where she basically gets to a point of giving up the control that she's trying so hard to maintain and on this album i feel like that lack of control kind of manifests and she ends up allowing herself to be who she feels she naturally is and so these tropes of her like being down bad and kind of simping for this guy craving that attention craving that validation from this person in particular are parts of herself that she might not like but that she's accept i wish we got a bit more varied content outside of the heavily love centric tracks because it does feel like you know a large you know serving of what i would like to be romance it's an i want what i can't have ass album but elegantly displayed with these really pretty occasionally harmonious generally very melodic vocals that i think are sung to is his highest degree and vocally she's not rigid here while i do think she might have had a bit more structure to her vocals on control in terms of like making fully fleshed out tracks i like how free she is on this album where oftentimes when she's singing it feels like more freestyle than than, than like planned outside of that though you know pretty enjoyable record and i think i'm going to be listening to this one from scissor for a, for a minute you know a lot of good songs on this album songs that i'm just going to keep replaying for certain vocal melodies there are song highlights here maybe not song highlights that are as huge as you know weekend as huge as maybe love galore oh no bro scissor just seems more like a vet here on this album feels a bit more mature and a bit more honest so hats off for that i like the record and thought it was a pretty nice display of her current state regardless of whether or not that state is flattered uh, y'all let me know how you felt about the record in the comment section down below interested to hear what you think about it and until next time you know what i'm saying we out